Hello guys, I welcome you to Vimbest Projects Limited, where we design and build classic homes. Okay, we are here on this wonderful early morning in Lagos State, Nigeria for episode two, the Raft Foundation. I am here today to show you guys the process, how we go about our Raft Foundation and what prompted Raft Foundation, the reinforcement that we are using for Raft Foundation and all the details that you need to know. So on this episode two, we'll be focusing more on the reinforcement. So but before the reinforcement, we have a, a soil test, which was done before we started this project. And we are following exactly the recommendations on the soil test. And one of the recommendations was to go down. The allowable you know, uh, founding depth is about 750 mm. There are some places that you do raft foundation, you just place it on the surface of the soil. Just on soil, you don't need to excavate, you know. So most people can have something like that. It depends on how your soil is and what the soil test in there. So for this particular project, we, we are told strictly to go down by 750 so that we'll be able to get the required soil that is convenient, that is okay for the foundation. So we have, uh, on the surface, we have about, uh, we have this uh, dark brownish sand on the layer, which is not too good for settlement. So when you get to from 0.75, that is 750 mm, we should be able to get the reddish brown uh, soil. With that, we're able to know your settlement can really get to the level that you should get to. So with that, that excavation, we've already started the excavation. And from the excavation, there are also some precautionary measures that we are told to do that we should not excavate above the level that was recommended. We are not supposed to do that, you know. We are also told to prevent water from coming into the trenches. So once we are finishing off, we can blind, so that from that blinding, we can now start setting our reinforcement. So today I have uh, the structural engineer here today on site. So we'll be working through this whole process together. It is from uh, Architect Engineering Council. So please, please welcome. So that uh, I want us to talk about the reinforcement. We need to know the reason why we are doing what we are doing. Because if you check what the iron builders are doing, you can see what is going on on site. Now almost everybody is in our work doing one or two. You know, so we are here today to you know, talk about this reinforcement. Why did we choose this type of wrap? So this is uh, Mr. Prince Way, he's from uh, Architect Engineering Consult. So he's our structural consultant for this project. So far, so good. What do you see? How is it going so far? Um, It's going well. Um, <laughs> Just that the soil challenges. It is crazy. It is crazy. It is crazy. Yes. It is crazy. On a normal day, most places we just you know do the wrap. Just on, 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 the surface, on the surface. Yes. So but for us to go this depth, for us to go this depth, and you can see the rubbles everywhere. So these rubbles alone is a big challenge on this exactly, own. So yes. for us we're to excavate, we're looking for where to stack all these things, it's a big challenge for the trenches. Why did we go for our foundation? Okay. Um, you know, we don't uh, design blindly. Yeah, exactly. Yes, exactly. Or, or do social designs blindly. Yes. We always recommend soil tests and exactly. analysis to be done. It must be done. And most times, we yes. cannot even bring a tray without the soil test. Yes. With that, we just, you know, he'll you know, send us back. You need the soil test. From that soil test, we'll be able to know the conditions of the soil. The soil. We have other kinds of foundation we can use to achieve the same project. But, you know, engineering, we also consider um, um, stability and cost. It must be stable and cost effective. effective yeah. No, imagine doing parts in this kind of loose soil. We have yeah. a part of 4.5 meters squared. Exactly. And, and that is not cost effective. And it's not uh, for the kind of sites we have. The the uh, construction process will be so tedious exactly. to achieve that. So now, from the soil test reports and results, we got a. Uh, uh, it was recommended that we use a raft foundation. Okay. Yes, which is so that raft is uh, actually a shallow uh, yes. foundation, not the deep foundation. Yes, okay, it's, a, so. it's a foundation system that is meant for that is designed in such a way that the building is floating. Okay. So okay. it's called a raft. Yes. Okay, the building is meant to float on the soil, so it's like a boat okay. in the sea. Yes. Okay. So some, some, yes. sometimes you see people doing uh, the, what do you call this a single raft? You have a single one, a battered one. Is it yes, we have, we have, one? we have, the, what, we have this, uh, mats, uh, which called slab raft, okay. in which the entire perimeter of the building is been slab. Okay. And the raft beams are raised on the slab. Okay. So which one are we which doing here? So we are doing inverted T raft. You can also see it okay. behind us. Yes. Okay. Okay. Inverted okay. Uh, 
T-Rax. Okay. So what is that one all about and why did you choose that? That was as a result of the soy test too? Yes. Okay, also, yes. And also we can also use an under kind of wrap for okay. this. But based on the uh, 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 loading on the structure. Okay. And cost effectiveness. That's yes. why we chose to use this for our design. And when we designed using the raft uh, inverted T raft beams. So so our foundation is stable now. We have yes, a stable. So yes. even if it's settling, it just it will settle you know, at it, a it, the um, report. Okay. There is an allowance for settlement. Okay, great, great, yes, great. So this foundation will cater for that allowance okay, for great, settlement. Great, great, yes. great, 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 great. Okay, that makes sense. So then uh, what prompted your you I, I see we have a uh, top runners of our uh, assistant MM three up and the four down. Why did we put that four on uh, the the T R that bottom? Yes, um, you, that for them? you know, majorly beams. This is a continuous beam, okay. It's continuous, okay. So, and um, um, more, more of the uh, uh, tensile forces, okay, are coming at the bottom parts okay. of the beam. You can just if, you notice, it if you can zoom, you can notice that mm. we have more widths and more ions at the bottom okay. Okay. than the top, okay. So, most of the anti load coming from the columns, that's why the beam is coming directly coming on, directly okay. on the Right, 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 so right, we have right, more of the forces coming to the bottom of the beam, so we have okay. more indicators for more reinforcement and for more concrete okay. uh, works. Okay. To be done okay. at the bottom. Great, 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 great. So so far uh, on this episode, I, I don't want us to go so deep. On the next episode, we'll be talking about the body and the carpentry work, how we, you know, bought the wraps after the reinforcement. And also, we are supposed to even go through this uh, body system first before now, but because we excavated. You know, so the iron reinforcement has to come in first. Then before we can do the first uh, sort of the casting for the base. Then before then the the boarding systems can now rest on the base. So on the next episode we're talking about the boarding system, how we board, how we do our the first uh, set of uh, casting for the raft base. Then before we do the filling, we just lead you through the process of achieving raft foundation here in Lagos. Thank you very much and God bless you. Thank you.